Hello guys, this is the continuation of our course series Public Economics and this is Unit 6 Local and Global Public Goods. So these are the topics we are going to cover in this video. So let's start. So what are the local public goods? Local public goods, goods like common property resources. They can be established by the local authority or government mainly for the consumption of local population. Here important thing is that local preferences are given the importance. But the provision of public goods or services by the public agency is based on the cost of service. The quantity of public good will depend on the cost of the service rather than the demand. So as in the case of the private good or service, it depends on the consumer demand. But in case of the public goods, it depends on the cost of the service. Consumer demand is not considered in the process in the case of public goods. Suppose there is a colony where the citizens wants a public park in every one kilometer. But because the society has better things to do, it will not be able to provide public parks at every kilometer. So it may provide public parks at every three kilometer. So the quantity the citizens are demanding, society will not provide. It will only provide what it can afford and what is the best for the welfare of the society. So there is a lack of explanation of citizen consumer choices. There is a control of political or bureaucratic nature type of control. Citizen choices are not directly reflective in the government choices. So as we have seen in the earlier cases, there is a problem with public goods and that is the public do not reveal their right preferences. So type out model is for providing efficient local public goods. So what he says, he provides a competitive metropolitan market. For the case of public goods, two scientists Musgrave and Samuelson, P.A. Samuelson, they have worked a lot of in the field of public goods and their main concern was that public do not reveal their true preferences. Maybe because they need to pay more taxes if they reveal their true preferences and they can still enjoy the public goods without paying the taxes. So they, why they need to reveal their true preferences. They will always understate their preferences. So type out concern is about getting the consumer preferences rightly revealed. Somehow we can get the what the consumer want so that we can provide the right amount of public good and we can collect the right amount of tax from the consumer and he feels satisfied like the consumption of private good. So in type out model there are certain assumptions. One is like mobile, the voters are fully mobile, they can move from one society to another at any point of time. Another thing is they have full knowledge of revenue and expenditure. They have full knowledge how much income they are gonna earn and what are the expenditure that will cost them to live in a society. So there is before entering in a society they know how much it is going to cost and whether they will be able to afford to live in that society or not. And there are large number of communities so the, the consumer have many options to choose from and based on his preferences he can live in a society or he can choose a community which satisfies his preferences and he is able to afford the cost of living in that community. There are other assumptions like dividend income so it avoids the unemployment issue and there are no external economies and there is an optimum size of community. If the size of the community goes higher than the optimum size, the cost of living in that society will also go high and if the size goes down, then cost of living in that society will also come down. So what type out model says that there are many communities and government is providing different different amount of public utilities or services in each community and there are consumers or voters based on their preferences they choose any community based on their preferences and their ability to afford the cost of living in that society or community. If the voters are going to a society where the size of that society is more than the optimum size then cost of living will be higher than the average cost. There will always be a movement of voters from the community which size is higher than the optimum size to the communities which size is lower than the optimum size because of the cost difference. So what are the policy implications of this type out model? 
वन इज दैट म्यूनसिपल इंटीग्रेशन इज जस्टिफिएबल ओनली वेन मोर ऑफ एनी सर्विस इज फॉर कमिंग एट द सेम टोटल कॉस्ट विदाउट एनी रिडक्शन इन एनी अदर सर्विस अदर इज पॉलिसी दैट प्रमोट रेजिडेंशियल मोबिलिटी एंड इंक्रीज द नॉलेज ऑफ द वोटर विल इम्प्रूव द एलोकेशन ऑफ गवर्नमेंट एक्सपेंडिचर एंड द थर्ड वन इज द पॉलिसी ऑफ फिक्सड रेवेन्यू एक्सपेंडिचर पैटर्न इज नॉट पॉसिबल इन लार्ज और डायनामिक मेट्रोपोलिस बट ओनली इन स्मॉल रूरल एंड सब अर्बन लोकैलिटीज बिकॉज इन लार्ज डायनामिक मेट्रोपोलिस कंज्यूमर प्रेफरेंसेज एंड देयर इनकम मे चेंज ओवर टाइम बट इन स्मॉल रूरल सब अर्बन लोकैलिटीज इट इज मेनली और लार्जली ए फिक्सड अमाउंट देयर प्रेफरेंसेज आर फिक्सड सो ए फिक्सड रेवेन्यू मॉडल मे वर्क इन लोकल गवर्नमेंट और वेरी स्मॉल रूरल गवर्नमेंट्स बट इन लार्ज गवर्नमेंट्स this fixed revenue expenditure model will not work because of the complexity involved so type out model supports decentralization uh, there should be small small units uh, if the there is fixed revenue expenditure pattern because small units or small local governments can understand or can reflect the true preferences of their voters and they can implement to the best welfare of the local citizens so there are some critic of type out model one is that because it supports decentralization and small small units the critic is that agglomeration or scale economics it says that if the government is large then it can afford to implement a large project like a metro or these kind of services is not possible through a small unit of government there is always a scale of economics in many services where the marginal cost keep reducing when the quantity of output is increasing so the large governments can leverage this advantage but small government will not have this advantage of scale economics and to take over on large projects or provide the services which have huge fixed cost and the second critic is that the sorting of people according to their preferences may give rise to undesirable outcomes like racial segregation or religion based communities these kinds of segregation will not be desirable in a society for peaceful reasons and the other critic is that multiple jurisdiction may lead to complicated metropolitan governance and uh, there are some orthodox economic theories which does not believe in local public goods and they disagree that this tax implication have anything to do with reallocation and people bother about that much they say that the people will not move even if you increase the tax very high so that's it for this video guys see you in the next video and if there are any comments or doubts you can post it in the comment section below i will love the feedback and thank you guys